Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, a state rep is sentenced. Also, the V Team takes a look at Alabama's gas chamber bill. And the primary races are on. <laughs> and in the words of that immortal bard, Samuel J. Snodgrass, as he was about to be led to the guillotine. Make them laugh, make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? <laughs> yeah, they kind of make me laugh too. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the V-Team. Welcome. Hi. Hello. No. Jack, Hello. good to have Hello. you back. Had to be back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw that Josh won a big trophy here, but he, uh, he's... Oh, wait a minute. I got it. I got it. Ah. Wow. <laughs> you that tacky. Well, that looked beautiful. <laughs> you set it right on the table. What was that for? Oh, it's fantasy football. It's very athletic. Yeah, it's when you, you, you exercise your finger clicking. You exactly. got it, You exercise your intelligence. There's no doubt about that. Eh. Uh, <laughs> course, I mean, I won. How much intelligence can be involved? Or you take, you yeah. exercise somebody, right? Yeah. You know what happens if you don't pay your exorcist? You get repossessed. Oh, that's just so terrible. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> that's a bad joke, isn't it? Pretty wretched. Okay. <laughs> Uh, since this is all, we only got six, six, six and a half minutes left. Uh, this week, Governor Kay Ivey kicked off her her campaign, and as we know, Jack, there is no step too high for a high stepper. stepper. That's right. And she did a great job, by the way. She did a super job. She was very buoyant, I would say, and had a pretty good crowd from Montgomery on a buoyant, on a buoyant. Yeah, yeah. I call that too. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. The only problem I had, Susan, and, and when, when, we, when we came in, I had walked out for a second. You texted me and said, oh, my goodness, Jimmy Rain, the yellow feller, is introducing Kay Ivey. I mean, it was sort well, of weird. that was the polite version of what I said, but it was, I was done. We walk in, Jabba Wagner, he comes on stage first. He's doing all this going. And I'm thinking he's the one that's going to introduce you. No, he introduced Jimmy Rain, who did the one thing that just really, really baffled me. He came in and he called her a, you know, when I saw her at Auburn for the first time, she was that beautiful, fresh-faced girl. And all of a sudden it came rushing back to me is that's the same thing he kind of said about Hubbard in his testimony in the Hubbard trial, that young, fresh-faced boy. That's all I could think about for the rest of the night. Well, this, I don't want to even go where that might be. Look, Jimmy Raines, <laughs> one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest man in Alabama. He has stood by Mike Hubbard's side. Josh, he testified uh, on Mike's behalf, kind of. Uh, he was supposed to be testifying against him, but he really defended Mike mm -hmm. and gave him a ton of money, uh, which I wish I had friends that would do that for me. Yeah. But Hubbard was convicted. He still stands by him. And then... Kay Ivey has him introduced. It's just bad optics for, yeah, for us. Yeah, well, because you know it, that, that he was involved in one of the felonies that Hubbard was convicted for. I mean, he was the one who gave him one of the things of value that had now landed him, I won't say in prison, but that's totally incorrect. Uh, somewhere short of prison, uh, how short, we don't know. Apparently, right. he's not like everybody else, and so he never actually goes. But, right. Uh, Limbo. Yeah, and so he's in prison purgatory, I guess. There and you so, uh, you know, that, but he was involved in this, and that's no secret. And, you know, there were some guys in Birmingham that just went to jail for providing a bribe. I mean, I don't know exactly. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it cost him fifty thousand dollars to get to introduce her. That's right. He, yeah. he did give her a fifty-five. And Jack, this has caused people around <coughs> the state to question if 
if Kay Ivey is not just an extension of the Riley guys. And I never thought, I, I thought at one point, yes, but now I think no. But people are questioning that after Jimmy Rain showed up. Well, you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't put that label on her yet. Let's see how she continues to govern. But she has kept some remnants of other governors around. You know, if you really want to be the anti-corruption person, yeah. Seems to me you'd clean house. <laughs> yeah, and she has she has go. done she has not cleaned house, and she uh, I mean this stuff with Greg Canfield and 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 Superboy and all that still stinks. <laughs> uh, Jack, you you've run a ton of campaign. You know a lot about the business. Why? I mean, Kay Ivey is popular. She's doing a good job. Why in the world would Senator Bill Howtower, Evangelist Scott Dawson, and 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 uh, Mayor Battle, Tommy Battle out of Huntsville, and then uh, Michael McAllister, nobody knows. Why are they running against her? She's running as an incumbent, and she's very, very popular. I even like Kay Ivey. I know you wonder why they're going on a suicide mission, except I think the conventional wisdom is if Kay wins, which she's slated to win, she's only going to serve four years. Right. And that's not a really long time when you're not an old person mm -hmm. when you're a battle or a high tower or Scott Dawson four years from now you've got you've gotten your name out in a campaign you've run a positive effort and it kind of paves the way for you to be a credible candidate four years down the road that's all I can imagine I mean Susan like she's polling at 90 percent mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard to attack uh, Governor Ivey I mean, it really is. I agree, and uh, you know, I, I think I'm with Jack, and then I, I think really at this point, these guys are just trying to get their statewide name ID out there in anticipation of another race, because there's, at this point, unless she has a major health crisis, she's probably going to be our next governor. Yeah, I mean, she she is our governor now, and, and Josh, as we've said plenty of times, best way to stay governor is Alabama is not get indicted mm -hmm. and don't do anything stupid, and she's yeah. not done either one of those. No, she's, she's really not done anything. Uh, um, yeah, you know, and, and you can criticize that, but it's it's really kind of hard to <coughs> criticize nothing. You know, I mean, it really is. And, and as long as she kind of stays out of the way and uh, and rides sort of the wave of of good economic fortune that was there prior to her arriving, uh, you know, I, I don't see any way for them to beat her. And unless it's like Susan said, they're kind of hanging around here waiting to see if maybe she doesn't make it, if there is a health scare, or if it's just you know there's no loss, they get their name out there. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a tough run for anybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, and she is, is in her 70s, and, mm -hmm. and it's a tough run for a 55-year-old. So, uh, but she's, like I said the other night, man, she was rocking the joint. She she knew her message. She was on message. She did a great high job. Stepping. I hear it. And, and, and that, that's her saying. Yeah. No steps too high for a high stepper. The crazy thing, we got about a minute left. Senator Slade Blackwell, he's in and he's out like a burger joint that just got served with the notice that they had tainted meat, Jack. What was that all about? I don't know what that was all about. I have no idea. So he decides not to run, throws his hat in the ring for governor at the last minute, and his longtime assistant runs for his spot. Yeah. And then she draws an opponent, and so he's out. Right, and the opponent's out because he works for UAB and he didn't get prior clearance. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Brown, political operative out of uh, uh, Hunt, uh, the Birmingham area, I think, threw Dan Roberts' name at the last minute. Uh, I just, I mean, we hardly knew you. I mean, you right. know, I mean, <laughs> right. that's, that's a good run. And, and, that's like my best, best governor run I've seen in a long time. Well, and what we hear is he wanted to make a point to get Kay Ivey to back away from uh, that the, the detention center mm -hmm. in Childersburg mm -hmm. say about 150 jobs. So maybe you just want to go out on a high note, Susan. I guess, but that kind of also, I think, ended his his future political career because he made so many people mad. Well, you know, in politics, people forgive and forget, especially when you've got the kind of money and family that Slade Blackwell yeah. has. We wish him all the best. Been a great guy, great center. We hate to see him go. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news. And analysis. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs>
Improving our education system here in Alabama has always been a challenge, but it's one worth tackling. Providing our students the opportunity and resources they need to become future leaders is one of the most important tasks ahead in Montgomery in the coming years. That's why I was proud to work with my colleagues in the governor's office to pass an ambitious but responsible state budget that helps our kids put their best foot forward. And we invested an extra $13 million in the Alabama pre-K program, the best in the country. I'm State Senator Tom Watley. We've got a lot of work ahead of us right here at home, and that's why I'm running for re-election. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Josh, we had some surprising uh, endorsements, some not so surprising, but some very surprising endorsements from the Farmers Federation mm -hmm. PAC. They endorsed Kay Ivey, uh, of course. They also endorsed Will Ainsworth mm -hmm. and Alice Martin. Alice Martin was especially an interesting pick. Yeah, well, the, the interesting part was who wasn't the pick yeah. there. Uh, the guy who's currently holding the office, which I believe is the only current office holder that they did not endorse there mm -hmm. was uh, Steve Marshall, mm -hmm. and which has really got to burn a little bit uh, if you're Steve Marshall. Uh, but Alice Martin, you know, Fairly, fairly good pick uh, yeah. for them, and uh, you know, for the Republican side of it, I guess. Anyway, I mean, she's no Chris Christie, of course, but I mean, and no one is, you know, and nobody yeah. is. Well, one of the guys is, but you know, it's <laughs> you know, a guy running for AG as a Democrat's named Chris Christie. Yeah, came Saying down that. from New yeah. Jersey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jack, do you find that surprising? Because Alphas usually plays it close to the vest. I don't really find it surprising. I really don't. I find some people uh, find the Rick Pate over Gerald Dahl endorsement yeah. for Ag uh -huh. Commissioner would be very interesting, but Rick Pate's from a longtime farmer family in Lowndes County mm -hmm. and well thought of. Um, but that might be a little more surprising. Well, and a, Alice Martin has quite a bit of farm background herself. Right. Also, you know, she's a uh, she's got a fishing license, she's got a bow license, I think she may have a Well, I'm, I'm sure most license. of them have. I mean, I, but she's a, being it's, a female it's un, it's and having it, yeah, for a female. Oh. Uh, it's I, also interesting that Alpha <coughs> and BCA are not on the same no. thought track this year no. on hmm. several of these races. Yeah, that's right. As BCA is, uh, as far as we know, has been all behind Marshall. They are not in favor of Will Ainsworth, we've heard, because he, uh, you know, he, he stood up to Mike Hubbard. You know, he, mm -hmm. Will was one of the only people that stood on the house of the, uh, floor of the house when Mike was speaker and basically called him a crook. <laughs> and people said that would end his political career. And I said, well, it might make it. Uh, you know, I mean, Apparently, between, Alpha thought so. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, he's got, a, comes from a big farm family as well, has that dream ranch up in uh, mm -hmm. Albertville or Gunnersville area. It was an interesting pick, uh, I thought. Uh, one of the other things I want to get to before we move on to the next subject is I, I thought it was interesting that uh, they that Lynn Stewart, of course, that was common knowledge that they would back, back her. Uh, but Brad Mendelheim, Mendel, Men, Mendheim, he was appointed by mm -hmm. Kay Ivey. And, and Josh, what we understand is there were, they appointed him because he wasn't running for the office, and yeah. now he's running for the office. Well, so how did that work out? <laughs> okay. yeah, I, don't, I don't understand that because yeah. I, I talked to uh, somebody who was interested in that office and had qualified for that office, and she could, they wouldn't appoint her because she was running for the office. I mean, it's just baffling. They call it, I think they call it the Luther, Luther rule. Luther rule, yeah. Isn't that, the, the, the chill point, as long as you're not running, you have a better chance, if you haven't qualified, you have a better chance of getting appointed than someone who's vastly more qualified that is qualified, I didn't mean that, but vastly has more experience that's qualified. Well, I think they got so burned on the Luther thing, right? That, that uh, Bentley yeah. did, Bentley did. Uh, well, the interesting thing about Lynn Stewart getting their endorsement Tom Parker is running against her. Mm -hmm. Tom's daddy was the in-house counsel for Alabama Farm Bureau many, many years wow. ago. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. I, I can tell you, I very rarely let it be known that who I'm voting for, but it won't be Lynn Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you want to continue to have an activist core. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, she's I, well suited for that. She is. I mean, I. 
I, I'm one of these throw the bums out, okay? I think you got Chris, um, uh, Richard uh, Miner, Chris McCool. Those are two of the best district attorneys in the state of Alabama. And they won't, have, the, they won't have any problem making decisions on any cases that are before them, I can no, guarantee no, you they that. Won't. They, they are good law They're and pretty, order guys. They're pretty hardcore guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they have taken on a lot of tough cases and, and, and unlike uh, Steve Marshall, they never shirked from public corruption. Uh, when they were in office. Uh, Josh? Well, we know they've dragged their feet in that court of criminal appeals. The, you know, it's the criminal court of appeals. <laughs> yeah, the criminal, what did I say? Court of, no, you, you said, said it correctly. Oh, <laughs> we like to call it the criminal court of appeals. Yeah. At least as it stands now. Uh, you know, and, and, and Josh, there's more mischief with this new bill. That's three, 317 we've been talking about for a while. You've written about it just mm -hmm. just this week. You wrote about the this eth economic development nonsense. Yeah, the you know the, the the amount of things that we'll do in the name of economic development is is really astounding sometimes. And and what what kills me is is this idea that there should be some added incentive for these people in the house down the street down here to go out and and do economic development for the state. That's what you're there for. You know, you're there. All of the things that you're supposed to do are to create economic advantages. You know, education and, and the economy, fixing the roads and the infrastructure, all of that stuff brings economic development here. Yeah, if you want to go out and recruit some businesses, okay. But you don't need to make extra money. We right. pay you enough as it is. And, and, and let me ask the $64,000 question. How many companies would hire a Randy Davis or a Mark Tuggle <laughs> Were they not members of the legislature? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody would hire these people. Why? And, you know, that should be a rule. And those are just two names I threw create, out of. Create a rule that says if you couldn't get hired before, you can't get hired after you take office. Right. right? You've but, got to do what you were doing before. Well, yeah, and, you know, most of these guys, once they get to Montgomery, you know, uh, John Kennedy said, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. Mm -hmm. These guys right here, rising tide lifts their yacht. Yeah. And that's, exactly. that's where yeah. they're at right now. They just want to make money off their office. We got another bill here that uh, sponsored by Trip Pittman and uh, 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 Richie Wingo. Uh, quite that, a pair. That would allow them to uh, keep secret, Jack, any opinions that the Ethics Commission gives them. Uh, now they've got a sub on it to change all that. But you know what? These secret opinions that they give now, I mean, they're not, they don't hold the weight of law, but they end up being the same thing as a get out of jail free card. I know, it's ridiculous. We are supposed to operate in the sunshine. Yeah. There's supposed to be transparency in government. Yes. But these guys, if they didn't learn anything from the Mike Hubbard trial, they better learn that they could be next. Yeah. Well, you know, if you just look at, let's say the, the Toyota Mazda deal right now, okay? And, and I'm not saying it's a bad deal, but when they came out and announced this thing, what were the numbers that they used? Was it $871 million in incentives? No, it was half of that. It was half of that. So why are you coming out lying about it? And then we have to figure out on the backside, after a paper goes through all the trouble of an open records request, which they then redact half the information out of, what, do we, what secrets do we need out of this? Why is everything so secretive in this world of economic development when all of these millions and billions, in some cases, of dollars are being passed around? That is the very time you've got to have people in the spotlight. Yeah, it is. I mean, Susan, we've seen it before. They want to keep things secret because they want to cheat. They want to cheat. They want to go back, and, and because Mike Hubbard got indicted on these and got convicted mm -hmm. of some of these economic development deals, he did get by with one because he had an opinion from That's the right. Ethics Commission. Even though that didn't legally hold water, a jury thought it did. So now they're wanting to go back and kind of soften that a little bit in case they get their little paws caught in the bear trap. You know, I, you know, some of these guys, they think they're so bright that they're playing 3D checker. They're just cheating at uh, 3D chess. They're just yeah. cheating at checkers. Yeah, That's I, all they're yeah doing. And, and let's be clear. <laughs> He should have been convicted. Of That's right. Oh, he he should have been convicted Absolutely. of those things. We're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news and analysis. Institute of Alabama promotes reliable, affordable, and clean energy to help grow our economy, create high-paying jobs, 
and build public support for Alabama's energy industry. Access to clean, affordable energy continues to be an issue of vital importance in the halls of government and around the kitchen tables across our nation. The Energy Institute of Alabama is the best source of energy industry information and how it affects households across the state, from convenient energy production to alternative fuels to solar power and beyond. to the V, the voice of Alabama politics. Mickey Hammonds, former state rep. He gone. He gone. He, he, he gone. was sentenced to three months in prison for mail fraud, basically using his campaign finance account as a little piggy bank for himself. But Susan, uh, they didn't want, the, the federal government didn't want him sentenced to anything but probation. Myron Thompson again saves the day and slaps him in prison for at least three months. Three months. Myron Thompson went, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to set precedent here. These guys can just get off using their campaign finances for their personal use. He's going to at least do some time in prison. Now, he's going to Club Fed. It's not like Mike Hubbard, but he's still going to jail for a little while. Well, three months lock confinement is still three yeah. months confinement. It's not easy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been married for 30 years. I know. <laughs> Oh. I'm gonna sleep uh, late tonight. Uh, uh, really uh, Josh, by the way, uh, you <laughs> There's know, gonna be I some confinement tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, Goose won't be on the loose. I'm <laughs> sure you that. But uh, you know, I think this is interesting because this was federal, mm -hmm. and that was low-hanging fruit there. Yeah. What about all these? subpoenas going out from the state. I mean, does this not portend of something bad? Yeah, I would say so. And first of all, I think we need to, uh, it, at some point, we're probably going to have to erect the statue of, of Myron Thompson somewhere around the state <laughs> for all the work he's done. I mean, on corrections and health care and everything else that he's saved us from here. But yeah, I think that when you look at the number, was it we're up to uh, 70, I believe yeah. now, uh, subpoenas have gone, that have gone out for this campaign finance stuff, where they have, uh, a bunch of lawmakers have kind of hidden a lot of personal charges that they've made on their credit cards by just putting down visa 20,000 uh, you know on the statements there I think there are a lot of people now who should be pretty nervous about what's taking place Jack you know don't I mean you like I said you've covered done so many campaigns I mean this not itemizing stuff and just throwing it on the credit card oh, yeah I mean, we've complained about that on this show for like three years yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's not talk about more transparency I mean you can't just Say, well, I paid Visa, you know, 18500 last month. What did you pay them for? Right, mm -hmm. right. Was it for new suits? Was it for tires for your car? Was it for campaign signs? Right. Just let us know. Well, it, Itemize. The it's interesting not that thing, tough. I, I tell you what, it's a very simple search. Just go to the Secretary of State site and put in uh, expenditures. Go in the expenditure search, put in Amex or Visa, and it is jaw-dropping. I oh, mean, yeah. jaw-dropping. And the worst are the personal loans to the campaign. Yeah, yeah. Where there's that's no another paperwork. issue. I, they, <laughs> should that's have, another issue. <laughs> they should have to produce the records on mm -hmm. that. Well, the one thing, as long as they paid for hookers with that money, we don't have to worry about it because sex is not a thing of value. <laughs> uh, of course, I think Mr. Albright Mr. Albright takes said a bit of issue with that. There is uh, an opinion on anyway, that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but I think my sources tell me Hold on to your panties, Granny, because more indictments are coming. Not for the feds, but from the state. Uh, I want to talk about Mike Hubbard. You brought this up a while ago. Lyles Burke, Associate uh, Justice on the uh, Criminal Court of Appeals, as I like to call him, has, uh, he's one of the four who failed to move this thing forward with Hubbard's appeal. Josh, he's been appointed by the president 
to uh, the federal bench here in, in Alabama, and he's been passed out of the Senate Judiciary up there on 11 to uh, 10 vote. He's got to face the whole Senate. If I were a Democrat and I heard this, or a Republican and heard that he didn't move on the single most corruption case in a decade, mm -hmm. I wouldn't vote for him. I'd tell him get out. Well, I don't. I don't think any Democrats are voting for him. Well, uh, but not. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the Doug makeup Jones, is. He can make or break him. <sighs> God bless you, Doug. Come on, Doug. <laughs> come on, Doug. Uh, you know, I, I don't understand how it is that politics continues to seep into things that, that criminal courts are supposed to take care of. And this is one of the worst to hear. The, this Mike Hubbard thing, because they are setting on this for a couple of different reasons. One's, one is this, and then the other is the fact that we have some elections coming up, and they don't want to make this ruling beforehand and risk some campaign contributions. It, that's, I mean, you know, if, if we can't do this right, that's a that's a pretty sad state of affairs that we yep. have. Yeah, it is. And we should, and, and Judge Burke should demand that they, they get this done. He can do that. He's, he's bigger than that. <laughs> We've only got about a minute and 30 seconds, but I know this is a topic, Jack, that Josh <laughs> is extremely interested in, and that is there is a bill that has passed out of committee that says in Alabama, we can reinstitute gas chambers. In other words, what it was said in committee, we can put them in a room, we'll suck out all the oxygen and pump it full of nitrous oxide. What a way to go, Josh. <laughs> Here goes his Tourette's again. I mean, Whose bill is this, Trip Pittman? This Trip Pittman. Trip Pittman. But, Trip's this, having a big time. This is the thing. This is the thing about it. I, This is like the third death bill that Trip Pittman has brought up in the last couple of years. What sort of morbid life is Pittman leading? That this is what he does, just sits around thinking up death bills of ways to kill people. Oh, well, last year he wanted to shoot them. <laughs> I mean, what the, it's going on. Well, Susan, oh. didn't you recommend we have a menu? Yeah, yeah, you know, just, you know, the death row men mates can just have their own menu. Would you like to be hung? Would you like to be face a firing squad? Or, you know, or would you like a burger chamber? with that, Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Can you serve it with their last meal? Yeah. You know, just put it there like the, the item you get in the Let's hotel room for not the forget. this morning. We have got we have now multiple people in the last few years who walked off death row proven to be innocent. Well, well one I mean, of them recently, recently who, who, who we can't claim is exonerated. Jack, we got ten seconds AD left. What do you got to say about it? Oh, this whole thing is just a big gas. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be the last word on that. You've Come been on, trip. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching the V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we. Watch that. <laughs> Jumping Jack Flash. Flash. It's a gas gas. Yeah. gas. <laughs> you know, you can get some emodium for that. Well, I don't need it. Oh, you don't.